His skin is white just like a ghost Thick Irish roots and his blonde hair And he sounds like a Chicago super fan A music nerd with a collection Of CDs from here to there Yes, Andy Dare is in Chicago Interviewing and barbecuing It's the Everybody, thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show. This is episode 125. I'm joined by Ryan Hoppy, and uh, yeah, he's a young broadcaster. He works in radio. He does podcasts. He's got his own podcast network. Um, he's good at ranting. He can keep up with a good subject for a long time, and uh, he can really give you his opinion. He's outspoken, but he's also just a real nice guy, and uh, yeah, he's helping put other people up as well and uh, getting other shows noticed as well. He uh, currently does a show on WNUR, and uh, he's doing that uh, overnights. He's uh, putting in the grind as a youngster. He's 21 years old, and uh, yes, I believe this kid could be the future of broadcasting. I would put my money down on him. And uh, yeah, Ryan Hoppy, we have a good little discussion, a phoner about uh, the state of radio, pretty much. Talk on all sorts of cool subjects, and uh, yeah, you get to hear what he's all about. So stay tuned for the interview. I thought since it's been a couple weeks off, since I've been uh, working on the website, andydare.com, um, that I would fill you in on what I've been up to. And yeah, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity of attending Resistance Pro Wrestling, which I've been kind of helping out with for uh, the last year and a half. And uh, if you don't know about it, it's Billy Corgan. He's the creative director of a wrestling league. And uh, they go all over, but they're uh, pretty much based out of Arabian Nights Horse Barn in Willowbrook, which is a western suburb about 20, 25 minutes uh, west of the city. And uh, it's a cool experience. It's family fun. Um, But there's a lot of cool action. It's a throwback to, like, when I was a youngster and uh, I was enjoying wrestling, kind of those old WrestleManias, a bunch of cool storylines going on. It's family fun. It's good for the kids, but it's also cool for the adults as well. And, uh, yeah, I would definitely say check out the next event. But, unfortunately, this that was the last one here in Willowbrook for the year. They will be back, I believe, early 2015. Do check them out, resistancepro.com. But, anywho, um, yeah, I got to uh, attend the attend the event with my buddies uh, Ryan and Drew from the Flea Cast. It was cool. They got to meet my buddy Jesse, who's a big part of the thing. And uh, they had a blast. They'll be coming again. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was cool. I got to present a check on be- on behalf of my glorious sponsor, Uncle Bub's Award-Winning Barbecue. Um, I got to, uh, you know, give a check to the charity that Resistance Pro works with, which is the Positive Outreach Program. So, yeah, a handful of the guys, uh, they help out with a charity uh, thing, and it's a really cool thing helping out uh, the less fortunate around Chicagoland. So I thought, uh, yeah, Uncle Bub's, they give their uh, – a a certain portion of their tips to charity every month. And I thought, hey, this is pretty local. It's a good cause. And uh, Resistance Pro, they're filming a reality show. So I thought maybe we we could help promote all these things together. And, uh, yeah, so I wasn't expected to get invited into the ring by C-Red, one of the wrestlers. And uh, so I went into the ring. He uh, explained the whole thing. I gave him the check and got a little round of applause It was a cool experience. I'll never forget it. And, uh, yeah, Drew and Ryan thought it was scripted. But, no, this is just I brought a check. I had talked to them beforehand, and they were the ones to make a big to-do of it. And I just want to thank everybody at Resistance Pro. They're doing a great thing. Um, I think we're right at the beginning of this. I think it's going to be huge. And, uh, yeah, hats off to the guys over at Resistance Pro Wrestling. Check them out at resistancepro.com. Also, uh, yeah, a week about... I think the next weekend, then, I went to go see Adrian Ballou at uh, the Old Town School of Folk Music. And uh, I'd never been to the venue before. It's kind of a cool, little upper crusty for me. I'm kind of a punk guy myself, but this is an interesting change of scenery for me. And I got to see Adrian Ballou. He's not a household name, but uh, a lot of the bands he's worked with are, such as Talking Heads, Nine Inch Nails, Frank Zappa, whole bunch of other groups, uh, King Crimson. 
the guy's definitely got his own style, and he played backed by only a bassist and a drummer, and a real tight three-piece. Not really uh, known for like long jamming, more of just very tight, concise little songs that would be stopped, what seems to be like right in the middle of the song, and then the band would stop and a sound effect would play. And then they'd go right into the next one. So it always kept you interested. It uh, was kind of like music for you know short attention spans. But a totally great guitarist, uh, virtuoso, but without all the wanking around, without the, he had the whammy bar, but he didn't uh, just overuse it. He used it when it needed to be used. And uh, yeah, good songs. I had really never even heard one of the songs before, but I was impressed. And uh, yeah, I'll be doing a review on Empty Lighthouse pretty soon about that. We will be right back and I will read a review from Empty Lighthouse. Let's do it. Yo. Jay Pox here from the Jay Pox Experience. Just here to remind you to keep it locked to the Andy Deer Show and all the other programming here on the fabulous Deer Network here in 2014. Jay Pox, Tyler Kale, Andy Deer. And we are back. I thought I would read an excerpt from my latest uh, Empty Lighthouse article. Just want to thank everybody at Empty Lighthouse. Uh, you can read that entire website, EmptyLighthouse.com. News, reviews, cool things about pop culture you would never thought existed. Uh, a lot of interesting writers over there. Thank you, Empty Lighthouse. But, uh, yeah, this week I thought I would write about the ever-ubiquitous and the hated by Jay Porks, but uh, still near and dear to my heart, uh, the Foo Fighters. And, uh, yeah, they got a new album out this week called Sonic Highways, and they've got a new miniseries with the same name that has been airing every Friday uh, for the last four or five weeks now, and that can be found at HBO. It is a great, great miniseries uh, just about the making of the album, and and it's full of incredible interviews with uh, historic musicians, you know, just awesome dudes and ladies from throughout the past of rock and roll music. And it's a very interesting take. They go to a different city every week. But how about I just get into my review? Since I didn't put it in there, I want to say that the mini, yeah, that the Sonic Highways miniseries receives five empty lighthouses out of five for me. But uh, yeah, here's my review of Sonic Highways. I'm going to read a little excerpt. Album review: Foo Fighters, Sonic Highways, written by Andy Dare, published November thirteenth, two thousand fourteen. Loved by popular consensus and loathed by most punk-slash-indie aficionados, all must agree on one thing. Dave Grohl makes great decisions. After the generation-altering loss of Kurt Cobain, Grohl could have easily dove into a similar crisis, depression, or addiction. Instead, he recorded the Foo Fighters' first album pretty much by himself, in itself a show of confidence. Sure, the meat and potatoes alt-pop sounds he created weren't anything new, but they did show a surprisingly well-versed appreciation for the early days of alternative rock. The decision to really seize the day and make the Foo Fighters a natural living and breathing rock group really took place on that second album, 1997's The Color and the Shape. Grohl and his bandmates created an emo rock sound devoid of self-pity and more focused on testosterone-fueled angst. This led to the Foo Fighters' popularity increasing exponentially throughout the 2000s, touring arenas and eventually culminating with a show at England's Wembley Stadium. You don't play Wembley without having good decision-making skills. That was a turning point. Where does Grohl want to take a band that already has it all? Turns out, back to the garage. Albeit a four-car luxury garage, but a garage nonetheless. He then decides to reunite with producer Butch Vig, who he hadn't worked with since Nirvana's Nevermind. He brings back Pat Smira, who is an elderly punk vibe, brings another level of credibility to the group. 2011's Wasting Light is the loud reminder that Grohl and company have a firm grasp on why they started the group in the first place. All right, well, that's a little excerpt. If you want to read the whole thing, go to EmptyLighthouse.com and search for Foo Fighters, Sonic Highways, and the album review will pop right up. You can also find it at AndyDare.com, and uh, I believe it's been tweeted and put on Facebook. But I want to thank those guys, and I want to thank you guys for staying with us uh, while we had a little turbulent times figuring out the new website, the new show, 
little bit of a new format we're working on, a whole bunch of cool things in the near dis in the near future. Just want to thank everybody who checks out the Dare Network shows, the Jay Porks Experience every Monday or Tuesday, and uh, the Tyler Kale Show every Thursday. And uh, they're good guys for doing it. They're great shows. That's the only reason why I would have them on Dare Network. And uh, you guys are great listeners. Want to thank Ryan Hoppy for the interview. And uh, without further ado, don't worry, be happy. Episode 125 with special guest Ryan Hoppy. All right, thank you everybody for checking out the Dare Show. This is episode 125. I am joined by uh, possibly the future of broadcasting, Ryan Hoppy. How you doing, man? Oh, wow, man. Please don't make my ego any bigger. I do appreciate the comment, and thank you for having me on the show. What's up, Andy? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, Ryan is a, a young gun in the crowd. He is 20 years old, 20 or 21. Um, I just turned 21 like two months ago on September 3rd. So. I got you. Nice. And, uh, yeah, you got your own show, the, uh, the Happy and Super Rich Show, and uh, is that on WNUR? Yeah, and it's airs from 2 to 4 a.m. Sometimes we're there from like 11 to 2 beforehand doing the pregame show where we play music just in case the other show doesn't show up. Basically, our show is a mix of like FM talk radio and top 40 hits and music from the last 10 years and all the requests you want. Basically, I hate the word shock jock. I hate the word edgy, but that's sort of where the show falls in. I've been influenced by guys like Rovers Morning Glory, Adam Kroll, Alex and Terry, Dahl, Brand Meyer. So it kind of falls in that category. But basically, it's me, my co host, Super Rich, Risky, and Timmer. They all, Risky, or no, Super Rich reads the news, I rant, and then everyone else just comments. It's a very fun show, and it's an up and coming show, I would say. Nice. And um, do they archive them if you can't listen live, or is this something you got to be tuned into from two to four? Um. Well, to find everything on my site, just in general, about my up-and-coming career, I'd say go to HoppyRadio.com. But to listen anytime, because if you're not up between 2 to 4 a.m., which is cool, I have my own app, which I recently which I recently purchased. It's at Hoppy Radio on the Apple shop. So if you have an iPhone, iPad, whatever, search up Hoppy Radio. But if you have an Android device, search up the TuneIn app or the Spreaker app and search up Hoppy Radio so you can listen to our shows on demand. Our show airs on Sunday mornings, and I usually have the podcast up like Monday night, so Very it's always on demand. Nice. And, uh, yeah, how'd you end up getting your whole app, your your own app together? I know uh, you offered that opportunity to me, and, uh, yeah, once we get things a little tidied up here over at Dare Network, that would be definitely be something that I'd be interested in. Well, I know a few guys who make side apps, but that was a little more out of my expense reach. What I do is I have my podcast. Basically, my home base is on Spreaker, Spreaker.com slash user slash Ryan Hoppy. And that's where I have the RSS feed that goes to TuneIn, that goes to Spreaker, and it goes to my app. And on the site Spreaker, it has a feature where you can buy your own app. It's for 140 bucks. Like, that is beyond a bargain. So that's sure. how I got my own app. And it's a kick-ass app because you can just play whatever. It has a little picture of me when you load it up. And I mean, <laughs> nice. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's a cool thing, too, so people don't have to ask, how do I listen, when do I listen, all this stuff. Just say, go get the app that's got all the info on it, and it makes it super and, streamlined. Sure. Yeah, and if you're a bit confused, all the links, everything you can find is at hoppyradio.com. There's a page that says where to listen, and everything's there, and it's also on the front page. So basically, it's hard to not see me or listen to me. Nice. Um, do, you, do you still have people? I, I get this all the time, and people even like Steve Dahl and Adam Krola get this, where they go, what is a podcast? You have to explain what a podcast is. And it's not like it just was invented this year. It's been around almost 10 years, if not 10 years. So I think it's just a, a matter of time before people just, uh, everybody and their grandma knows what a podcast is. How, well, how, do you like being on radio, or is it something that, uh, would you prefer just to do your own podcast, or would you like to do both? Well, first to answer your podcast saying, most people seem to know what it is in 2014, but my uncle didn't get the difference because he was in town like six weeks ago and we're listening to podcasts. And he's like, wait, was this on the radio? 
And I'm like, no, this was recorded at home. And then I would listen to a podcast, The Rover. And he's like, wait, I saw Rover was on the radio. It was like goddamn rocket science trying to explain the difference between a podcast of a radio show, which is just the show on demand, and then an actual podcast that's not on the air. So that was rocket science. So I think at times that can come off confusing. And just how fast it's grown probably since 05 when it first came out. Um, the whole podcast phenomenon. But I think mostly people know what it is, even if they're a little confused. They know how to listen. And the second question, I really don't think FM Talk has to die. I really don't think we have to go to the podcast format of having edgy talk shows that guys like Dahl and Bram Meyer and Howard and Opie and Anthony and Rover and all these guys made a career of. I think... There is going to be money within 10 years. I think the podcast phenomenon is going to explode. I think there's going to be major money in it because you see what guys like Kevin Smith, Mark Marin, Jim Florentine with the Riotcast Network, Dahl, Adam Carolla, what they all do, sort of making money on the side with podcasting. But I think there's going to be a company, a radio company, that's going to see that you need to bring back the guy to FM Talk Radio, and they're going to buy out like a podcasting network and almost create something like CBS Radio or iHeartMedia where it's home to podcasts and you have agents that get you podcast roles. Sure, I think that's like, cool. I'm not going to hate on any show that's on the radio, but there's too many shows, man, that sound the same, that play the same songs. And I think radio, I want to get into radio. I love radio, but I think radio is a little scared of podcasts. I think TV is scared of Netflix. I think media in general needs to incorporate and come together and just build this brand for the future because everything is on your phone now. You don't have to listen live to, let's say, Rover or Lexenteri or Dawn, WLS, to hear it live. You don't have to be there because 10 years ago, you're like, crap, I missed the show. Now it's on demand any time. So I think podcasting and radio is the future because – I truly believe that these CEOs will be afraid of it and they will have to combine forces. That's just my two cents. Yeah, I think they definitely need to combine forces and stop fighting against each other and start fighting together. And uh, yeah, the turnover in radio is crazy. Seeing Roe and Roper get canned and then uh, Dahl taking their position. But then the weird thing that uh, behind the scenes about that is that Cumulus, um, you know, is obviously WLS. It's the loop. It's all this stuff. They also bought a big part of the Steve Dahl Podcast Network. So it's kind of like, yeah, we want you on our radio. I'm sure it was a bargaining thing to get Steve was, hey, you have to put money into my podcast network. So once we have this big radio money fueling a podcast network, I think this is the beginning of something that could be really cool with radio working together with podcasts because they, maybe they see that their time is numbered, you know, the days are numbered. Well, here's my biggest problem with edgy radio because i mean you're going to always have the shows like eric and cassie which i grew up on with my mom like i i'm not a listener of eric and cassie but i respect them i'm a fan of all those shows because they've made it in radio i mean they're in the third biggest market i don't get people who hate on eric and cassie or shows like that just because they're not edgy they are professionals who are paid but here's my thing edgy talk radio doesn't have to die on the fm dial you have 102.5 the bone in tampa which is doing great you have 104.1 104.1 Real Radio in uh, Orlando that's doing great. WMMS plays Rover and Alan Cox on, in Cleveland. And then there's different markets that have edgy shows in the morning. Here's the deal. And here's what I believe and here's what I've heard from people. The problem is there's sponsors that are afraid that if one of the, say, and in quotes, shock jock, says something, oh, no. They're not going to buy Mountain Dew anymore. It's ridiculous. Like, just because he calls Kim Kardashian a whore or goes on a rant, no one's going to buy Pepsi anymore. Like, let's say I were to have a show next week, and I were to just go on this open rant about Kim Kardashian and just rip her, (laughs) and I get fired from my job. Do you think people in 2017 weren't going to buy Pepsi if that was my sponsor? Or are they going to move on? Because there's news going on every day with the news cycle. Are they going to really care about what a quote-unquote shock jock says? That's what annoys me, part one. Part two, Andy, what really pisses me off, and I defended the hell out of Audie Lang on my segment, which is at copyradio.com. What annoyed me is 
You can't even say anything without people getting offended. Marty <laughs> Lang was the co-host of one of the most legendary, influential, edgy shows of all time, Howard Stern. He's not exactly Joe Olstein. What do you want <laughs> from him on Twitter? It is ridiculous. And all these people who get offended probably don't even know who Ari Lang is and don't know the struggle he has gone through in life and how far he has come. So it's utterly sure. sickening when these fake outraged police, Andy, do you really think they were offended by what he said? Yeah, it was shocking. But you can see more shocking things. I'm going to be a little dirty. Like going on like a porn site and seeing like some torturing or something. You know, like on a side sure. edge. Yeah. That's, more, that's more shocking than what Artie Lang said. Because he's talking about his uh, fantasies sexually. Oh, no, we don't all have <laughs> fantasies. Get the hell out of here. I just hate this phony baloney, like, fake outrage thing where every week someone has to get their job fired. Oh, no, because they said something. And these same people that get these guys fired, I'm going to tell them right now if they're listening, how would you feel if you said something around a water cooler, it got recorded, and then you got fired because of it? Like, dude. Yeah, I know ridiculous. this is your show. I don't want to take over, but it's just, it gets me so angry because they're not really mad. They're just trying to get attention. Well, oh, it's, it's dude, happening it's more just, and more in the news now. I mean, Open Anthony, I mean, the guy is totally, yeah. I mean, his, his career isn't ruined, but it, it certainly is a couple of checks that he will not be getting in his bank. You know, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll land on his feet. He's got a big enough following. He's been doing it long enough. But at the same point, it's all just like a mass, a mob rule where if uh, one person doesn't agree with it, um, then people all start to uh, agree with that one person, and then finally they, they end up uh, taking him to the town center and killing him in front of everybody. I mean, that's pretty much what happened to yeah. Anthony. So, I don't well, know. what about Adam Richman from the Food Network? He made some fat joke on Instagram, and yeah. everyone got offended because he insulted the way the person lost weight, which is like liposuction. And there's other examples, too, where people get fired. Oh, uh, Dan Levitard from ESPN, heaven forbid, he put some publicity in his show by having a billboard in Akron mocking that LeBron is back and they won two rings in Miami. Or uh, Smith from First Take, a show that is known to be scripted. He went on an outrageous rant about Ray Rice, saying that maybe she invoked him and said something that pissed him off. I'm not saying what Smith said was right, but you have to think about it. We weren't there. We don't know what happened. It's just like... How is this happening? Yeah, How are we actually hurting? <laughs> yeah. It's Andy, a conjecture. you're a douchebag. Andy, you're a loser. Did those words just hurt? I'm not being serious. I'm just <laughs> saying, I don't know why these words hurt. It's like, we grew up on saying, ignore the bullies. We grew up, Andy, on saying, words don't hurt. But now words hurt more than breaking your legs. Like, did I hurt your feelings when I just called you a douchebag for a second, even though I'm kidding? Not no. at all. No. <laughs> but it's true. We grew it's up ridiculous. raised that yeah, words or sticks and stones are the only things that can hurt you. And now it's just everybody's super sensitive. It's a complete politically correct life that we had to lead now. If everybody's feelings are not, com or, you know, not touched, then um, I don't know. We get in trouble. And I, I, what I like is the freedom. I like the creativity. That's why the my favorite jacks. Corolla, all those guys, they've really stuck their neck out multiple times for their art, and uh, they never backed down once. If they did get in trouble, they kept moving, they kept walking, they kept, uh, you know, they brushed it off, and uh, that's why I really idolize these cats. And uh, yeah, one of the reasons why I think that you've got a future in this because you can you can see that you can understand this. And here's what I don't get: the people who complain. I'm not saying they're always women. They might be men who aren't in the same demographic as, let's say, Obi and Anthony. They're not in the same demographic as Artie Lane, so they're not going to buy the products. So what are you protesting against? <laughs> Go do something else in your life. Are you honestly that mad that Anthony Cunha got beat up by a girl at 4 in the morning and went on a possibly racial rampage, even though I don't think it was that bad? Or that Artie Lang made some jokes about a hot ESPN reporter, even though every time we watch ESPN, we think dirty thoughts about Michelle Beadle. Let's be honest here. We all do because we're guys. It's just this funny baloney BS, dude. We're like, we always got to get people in trouble. And it's just a fake outrage. Like, I would be outraged. I'm not kidding if Obama said that. If Obama was like, wow, Michelle Beadle's a hot piece of asshole. <laughs> take her to my room and do some dirty things. Now, that would be creepy. Or maybe Joel. Yeah, 
after I'm done being a fake preacher, I'm going to take uh, Aaron Andrews and bang her out. Now, that would be a little creepy. But it's Artie Lang. It's, a it's comedian. Anthony Cumia. Yeah. It's, it's Adam Richmond. They're entertainers. What do you want from them? Do you want them to do knock-knock jokes now? Like, we're getting to this point where it's actually becoming an epidemic. Because every week I go, who's going to get fired now? It's and true. It's just getting bad. This episode of The Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue in Westmont, Illinois. Family owned and operated since 1997, Uncle Bub's is the real deal barbecue. A family friendly restaurant open seven days a week. Also, it's a full service catering company doing weddings, pig roasts, luau's, grill packages, you name it. They have a friendly, helpful staff that will make sure that your party goes off without a hitch. Call them at 630 493 9000. Visit them at 132 South Cass Avenue in Westmont, Illinois, and UncleBubs.com. Hey, man, I know you like grilling. I know you like getting those dark grill marks on your burgers, fish, chicken. And I know you don't want to just dry your meat out like you're cooking with a hair dryer. Why not get the man grate and click through the AndyDareShow.com's banner so we can keep the lights on here at Honeycomb Hideout Studios in gorgeous Westmont, Illinois. The man grate. This episode of The Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Record Utopia, a music lover's dream with thousands of vinyl records, musical instruments, and sound gear. They buy, sell, and trade. Give them a call at 630-963-1957. Visit them in Westmont, Illinois at 309 West Ogden Avenue on the web at recordutopia.com. It's always a good, relaxed atmosphere. Check them out. Record Utopia. And it's all the sponsors to blame. It's all like the mass media to blame, and it's politically correctness to blame. That's being force fed to un in universities, is what I believe. If you ever see, oh yeah, the best the part, movie, wait, you can definitely understand wait, that's where the beginning was. So yeah, or how about on Fox News they go the sexist and racist tweets by Artie Lang. You're on News Network. You're not supposed to be using biased words. Say Twitter rant by Artie Lang. Why are you putting in some little agenda, Fox News, some little propaganda, racial and sexist tweets? You sound like some woman's blog of some bored house mom who lives in Naperville, sure. who lives off of her <laughs> husband's money as a lawyer. If that's the type of headline she would have. If what is this racial and sexist tweets? That is so biased. I mean, I know Fox News and MSNBC, they're biased, but they're also news networks. You can't have that be your headline on the website. Maybe you have question marks. Was yeah. it racist? <laughs> was it sexist? There but to go. say it was sexist and racial, get the hell out of yeah. here. <laughs> And they're they're Losers. doing their own, their own their own like way of shocking people is by throwing this shocking piece of news up on their news. Now they're shocking, so people housewives are tuning in across the land. And uh, yeah, it's sad. It comes from the left and the right, though. And uh, yeah, it's something that you 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 learn in a university. You you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings in the classroom. You want to totally approach everybody the same way, which is a good outlook. But I don't think it's truly reality, and I think uh, yeah. there's a way of dealing with it without, you know, being a complete asshole about things. But uh, yeah, how about it's definitely, this? Uh, even how like about the NFL. Is cool. head. What? How about we just turn our head? Or yeah. the NFL? Yeah. yeah, it's getting even worse. The pussification of America. <laughs> like, what do you think about the NFL? I'm getting angry. Well, I I read tweets uh, from people that I respect, mostly women, that say. Uh, yeah. When is the NFL going to be outlawed? I give it five years. Are you kidding me? This is the most money-making thing in the country, and it's an old, it's a tradition, it's a good thing. It's just uh, they are thugs there. A lot of these guys, you know, they get hit in the head for a living. They're not going to be the most completely sane individuals. They're not going to be, you know, congressmen, even though some congressmen are messed up in their own little ways. Uh, football players, just it's a huge cross-section of the population. It's an urban thing. It's a, They weren't raised right, so they went to... They went and played football, and guess what? They're making millions now, so now they have that income. It's just uh, you're going to have incidents in any sport. I mean, I, maybe not in table tennis or something like that, but uh, in football they're feeling it, and now I think the news has just latched onto it and ran with it, and now it's a thing in 2014. Here's my thing. I think TMZ ruined everything when he got into like TMZ Sports and just when they became TMZ. Because like, Can you imagine – 
if Lawrence Taylor played <laughs> nowadays, he raped the girl, or if Mike Tyson did. Mike Tyson's our hero. He has a new cartoon on Adult Swim. He was hilarious in The Hangover. Everyone loves when he's on a media show. He raped a girl and went to jail. Or how about Dennis Rodman, who there are rumors, this was never actually confirmed, but he potentially snorted coke in Vegas after winning an NBA championship. This is all before social media. Or what about Joe Namath, who would constantly get drunk and was known to drive home drunk <laughs> after games when he owned his own bar? Like, it says there's this new thing where you can't even do anything without the spotlight being on you. Like, it's just, I know that comes with camera phones, but we need to give them some privacy and realize that just because they're famous doesn't mean diddly squat. Because that's what's ruining everything is Harvey Levin and these yeah, leeches yeah. trying to get people in trouble. But if Harvey Levin did something or one of his TMZ reporters did something, we wouldn't be allowed to talk about it, man. <laughs> but what if Harvey Levin was at the beach with his boyfriend, man? He can't take pictures of you or your boyfriend or Charles, the guy with the braid. He's with his hot girlfriend at the beach. We can't take pictures when it's a celebrity. Oh, yeah, books are open. Shut up, TMZ. Screw you. Yeah, not like, and like they're, they are selling ad space worth millions, and they're profiting off that. So, yeah, I think it's a perfect storm of social media. Everybody's got a cell phone with Twitter and all that. And uh, 24 hours news cycle, which kind of hit about 10 years ago, but it's still there. And I think those things together... That means I don't know if I want to be a celebrity. Maybe I maybe I just want to chill here in Chicagoland. But uh, I would like the money, but I don't know about the fame anymore. And I I think it's just because there is zero privacy and uh, it's it's a pain. But I mean it's 2014 and uh, this is what we're dealing with. Um, but yeah, I feel like you're the future. Um, if you want to give uh, some plugs out, how about uh, your your twitters, your shows, and uh, what else you want would like to plug? Go ahead. All right. Well, if you like my musings and my rantings on Andy's show, follow me on Twitter, H-O-P-P-E Radio 893, Hoppy Radio 893. Check out HoppyRadio.com. And Andy's actually featured on my media network, which is similar to like Riot Cat, Doll, Adam Cola, HoppyRadio.com. I have a lot of names on there. I don't want to list them off right now and bore the listeners. So check out HoppyRadio.com, HoppyRadio.com, Hoppy Radio 893. And then to listen to my show on demand, if you are not off between 2 to 4 a.m. on WNUR 89.3, my mobile app on the app shop is Hoppy Radio. Just search it up. You can have it on your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you have. And that's free? Your I- yeah, that's free. Free to download. And then huh? on the – oh, hell yeah. Everyone should check it out. And then if you have an Android device, just download Tune, and that's the easiest app. Search up Hoppy Radio. Basically, the easiest way to find me for all the links is HoppyRadio.com and at HoppyRadio893. Very cool. Uh, yeah, just want to thank you for taking the time out. And um, I've, been, I've been following your story, and it's cool, and I think you're just beginning big things. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you don't forget us when you blow up to the, to the mainstream here. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. When I blow up, I'm bringing everyone with Hoppy's Road with me because we're all the talents that actually speaks our mind. And, and has some guts. That's what I love about Hoppy's role, and that's what I love about my show. I want to bring everyone with me because I'm sick of everyone being thrown under the bus, and I want to have this new movement in talk radio and just media in general where maybe we don't have the biggest sponsors, but we have sponsors who back us, and we make a living off of speaking our mind. So that's just my goal in media overall. That's very awesome. Thanks for taking the time out, man. And on behalf of uh, Ryan Hoppy, this is Andy Dare signing off for the Andy Dare Show. Thank you, Andy. All right, we'll cut it there, man. Uh, this will be up on Saturday. Just want to thank you for doing it. Sounds good, dude. That's so good to rant. I hope I didn't talk too much. No, it was perfect. I just had to let up. <laughs> it was good times. Um, yeah, and the sound pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll chop this up, and we'll have it up on Saturday. I'll, uh, I'll send you a text letting you know. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. All right, talk to you later, man. Okay, bye. Be sure to follow Andy on Twitter, that's at Andy Dare, and like our show on Facebook, that's Facebook.com slash the Andy Dare Show. Videos at YouTube.com slash Andrew Martin Dare, and we're on iTunes, you can search the Andy Dare Show, please leave a review. Thanks so much to our wonderful sponsors, Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue, Record Utopia, The Band Great, and Amazon.com, theme song courtesy of Rich Banks Music. Thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show. 
theandydareshow.com.